how do you pass the mathematics subtest of the elementary education multiple subjects exam? What are the big concepts you need to know? Well, I'm Scott Roselle, the founder of 240 Tutoring. We provide the best study guides for the Praxis exams. I've analyzed and studied the multiple subjects exam, and today I'm gonna let you in on the secrets that we have found and the concepts we know are gonna be on the test so you can be prepared to pass the exam. So keep watching. For the Praxis 5003, you'll have 65 minutes to complete 50 multiple choice questions. You'll be presented with selected response questions, both single selection and multiple selection, and numeric entry questions. An on-screen scientific calculator will be available for your use. The mathematics subtest can be neatly divided into three different sections. Those sections are number and operations, algebraic thinking, and geometry and measurement, data, statistics, and probability. So let's get started with the biggest, numbers and operations. This section tests your number sense and ability to solve addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division problems. Now, the number operations questions make up about 40% of the mathematics subtest. Now, there are three big concepts you definitely have to know to get these questions correct. Place value, operations and rational numbers, number theory and reasoning. The first big concept to know is the place value system. You need to know how to write numbers in various ways, including numerals, words, and expanded form. For example, here are the various ways to write the number 523. You can use the numerals 523. You can use the words 523. Or the expanded form 500 plus 20 plus 3. Make sure you understand place value, the ones, tens, hundreds, etc., both to the left and to the right of the decimal and in exponents. Finally, practice rounding numbers to any place value. You'll have to round numbers to the nearest tenths, hundreds, and thousands. Another big concept to know is operations and rational numbers. A rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction or ratio. Examples of rational numbers include 7, 1.75, negative 0.6, and 0.111. You will be presented with multiple step and real world problems where you must conduct operations with rational numbers. When using division, be comfortable with remainders and also do lots of practice problems with fractions. Most importantly, you have to know the order of operations. I'll talk about that later in the video. Be prepared to represent numbers on a number line. You'll see numbers represented in drawings, models, and even arrays. And finally, be comfortable with converting between fractions, decimals, and percentages. And the last big concept to be familiar with is number theory and reasoning. So you need to know what prime and composite numbers are and how to find factors and multiples. You also need to be able to reason and use mental math. Now those are just three broad concepts to be familiar with. Right now, I'm gonna give you three specific concepts to be familiar with because they will most likely appear on the test. The order of operations, or PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, is simply the process you follow to work through and simplify an equation. Let me give you an example. If you have an equation like two parentheses x minus three plus three parentheses x plus four squared, you have to work the problem according to a specific order, the order of operations. In this particular example, you would first solve for the parentheses, then you would solve for the exponents, then going left to right, you do either multiplication or division, and then you would either do addition or subtraction in the same order, left to right. So that's why we group the M and the D and the A and the S together. Now, this is incredibly important on the test because you will be required to simplify an equation. So you have to know the order of operations to get that question correct. The next thing you'll see on the exam are word problems. These problems will include all four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, my biggest tip to help you with this is to simply work through a lot of authentic practice questions, specifically word problems in mathematics. Now, while these questions aren't going to be the most complex, it does take a lot of practice to learn how to read a question prompt, understand the question, and then solve the problem. And really, it's just one of those things that you have to practice, practice, practice. 
So find a great resource of authentic practice questions that you can use. I'd personally recommend a 242 drain study guide. And the last specific concept is prime and composite numbers. A prime number is a whole number that cannot be made by multiplying other whole numbers together, besides the number one and itself. Example of prime numbers include two, three, five, seven, and 11, and there are many, many more. Now, a composite number is a whole number that can be made by multiplying two other whole numbers together besides one in itself. Examples of composite numbers include four, six, eight, nine, 10, 12, and there are many, many more. If all this seems like a lot, it's because it is. There's a lot to know on the exam, and if you want to pass it, you have to study. Now, the good news is that 240 Tutoring already has done all the hard work figuring out how to study and how to create the best materials to study and creating authentic questions to practice the test. Oh, and the test is really expensive. So do yourself a favor and save a bunch of time and money and simply use a 242 during study guide. Let's look at the next section of the exam, algebraic thinking. This section tests your ability to, you guessed it, solve algebra problems. Algebraic think questions make up about 30% of the mathematics subtest. Now, there are three big concepts you're gonna have to know to get these questions correct. Expressions, equations, and formulas, linear equations and inequalities, and patterns. The first big concept you need to know is how to solve expressions and equations and use formulas. First of all, you have to know the difference between an expression and an equation. And you will be asked to add and to subtract linear equations to use the distributive property, to solve simple expressions, to use formulas and represent words with equations and expressions. And finally, know the difference between independent and dependent variables and be able to identify each in formulas. The next big concept is linear equations and inequalities. You will definitely be asked to solve linear equations and inequalities, and these will be pretty basic with only one variable. But be ready to graph a solution on a number line and use equations, tables, and graphs to solve the problems. Now, the last big concept to know is patterns. You need to be able to identify, extend, describe, and make patterns both with shapes and numbers. On the test, you may be asked to have to find a rule for uh, a function table by looking at a set of two numerical patterns. So those are the three broad concepts to be familiar with for the algebraic section. But now, I wanna to talk to you about some specific concepts that are almost guaranteed to come up on the exam. So right now, I'm gonna give you three specific concepts that you have to know. You need to know how to solve for x. Solving for x is pretty straightforward. The test will give you an equation and then you have to solve for x. So the test will give you something like this. 4x squared minus four parentheses three plus two equals 16. And in this equation, we just need to balance the equation for x. So you would simplify it as much as you can, balance the equation, and you find that x equals three. Now take note, you're more than likely going to be presented with a real world problem solving for x. So be able to take what you need from the problem, build the equation, and solve for x. You're also going to have to solve inequalities. Solving inequality statements in one variable such as 3 fourths x minus nine is greater than 21 is much the same like solving an equation in those addressed above. The only major differences is that one, the direction of the inequality sign will change after some operations are performed, and two, a finished final answer generally requires the variable to be written on the left. And three, the solution set is often presented on a number line. Now, the next concept is creating an equation from a data set. The test will give you a data set that looks something like this on the screen. And you're required to create a corresponding equation that matches the data set. For this data set, the corresponding equation is y equals one minus two x. Now, if you look at the data set, anytime you plug in the x value, you get the corresponding y value when you solve the equation. And while this kind of question can seem difficult, it's one of the easier questions to answer if you just work backwards. All you need to do is look at the answer options, plug in the data set values to each equation, and see if they match. The next concept to know is the difference between equations and expressions. And it's really pretty simple. The main difference between equations and expressions is an equal sign. An equation has one and an expression does not. Look at some examples. These are some examples of expressions. 7x minus two, x squared minus three x plus five, three x squared plus five x plus nine. Now compare that with equations. 
8x equals 16, 2x plus 1 equals 7, 20 minus 7x equals 6x minus 6. Now let's go ahead and look at the next section, geometry, measurement, data statistics, and probability. Now this section is going to test your knowledge on a wide range of math concepts, including shapes, the coordinate plane, measurement, and the likelihood of an event occurring. And this section will make up 30% of the mathematics subtest. There are three big concepts you definitely have to know to get these questions correct. Shapes, measurement, data, and probability. The first big concept you know for the test involves one, two, and three-dimensional shapes, their properties, and how to find the perimeter area, surface area, and volume of those shapes. You need to know these terms and how to identify them in shapes, like lines, rays, line segments, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, angles. Also, be able to find the area and the perimeter of two-dimensional shapes, the volume, and the surface area of a rectangular prism. Finally, know what the coordinate plane is and how to solve problems with it. The next big concept to know concerns measurement. Be comfortable solving measurement problems with elapsed time, with money, length, volume, and mass. Also, you will be asked to measure and compare objects, so be familiar with the customary and metric measurement systems. Now again, if all this seems like a lot, it's because it is. There's just so much to know on the exam, and if you want to pass it, you have to study. The good news is 240 Tutoring has already done all the hard work. We've got you covered. We've put all the materials together that you need. We've got all the practice questions. All you have to do is just use our guaranteed study guide for a simple monthly subscription, and you don't have to worry about when, how, how much to study. We outline it all for you. So go to 240tutoring.com or check the description below, get a link, you will not regret it. And even if you do, we have a 48 hour no questions asked refund policy. And the last big section to be familiar with is data and probability. The most important thing to understand is what the measures of central tendency are, mode, mean, median, and range, and how changes in data affect each of these. Be aware of and be able to create different ways to organize and display data like box plots, histograms, and scatter plots. Finally, be able to determine the likelihood of an event happening. Like, what are the odds, well, one is rolled on a six-sided die, or if there's a bag of jelly beans, five red, five green, and five black jelly beans, what are the odds of drawing a one uh, of a black jelly bean when you draw a jelly bean from the back? Questions like that are going to be on the test. Now, those are the three broad concepts to be familiar with. Now, let's look at some specific concepts for this section. So right now, I'm gonna give you three concepts to be familiar with because they're most likely to appear on the test. The first is the measures of central tendencies. I met, mentioned this earlier in the video. So what, what does this mean? What are the measures of central tendencies? It's simply four concepts, mode, median, mean, and range. Now, on the test, they're gonna give you a data set of about eight to 12 numbers, and they're gonna ask you one or more of the following. What's the mode, what's the median, what's the mean, and what's the range of the data set? They'll also be embedded in real world problems. So you have to know what those central tendency measurements are and how to find them in a given data set. And when you practice, work on a data set about eight to 12 double digit numbers. The second concept is the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is used to find any length of a side on a right triangle if you know the other two sides. The equation of the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared where A and B are the two sides of the right triangle, and C is the hypotenuse of the triangle. And I guarantee you one thing, if you take anything away from this video, you will have a question about the Pythagorean theorem on the test. This is an absolute guarantee, and it's most likely gonna be in some sort of word problem. An example would be something like, Billy walked three blocks west and four blocks north. If Billy walked a straight line, how many blocks would Billy have walked? Something like this is going to show up on the test. The last concept is the idea of the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane is a two-dimensional number line with both an X and a Y axis. The X axis is horizontal and the Y axis is vertical. It has four quadrants, sections, and an origin located at the intersection of the coordinates, zero, zero. You use a coordinate plane to plot points and graph lines and shapes. Now, those are the concepts you have to know on the test, so I wanna take a few moments and look at a few practice questions in each of those areas to see how these concepts might actually appear on the test. 